Why don't we just go ahead and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Worship the I am that I am, the ancient of days. Worship the unchangeable changer. Worship the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord who never lost a war. Worship the Holy One of Israel. Worship the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Praise the I am that I am. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. The one who is glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, magnify his holy name, praise him, praise him. He's worthy to be praised. There's no one like him. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Rakir Romonko Shiki Randra Makakatunde Ramoko Roki Shikan Tara Makutunda. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty The great Hallelujah. 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 You are the King of Kings, the mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, we bless your name. The all-sufficient God, Jehovah El Shaddai. The I am that I am, from everlasting to everlasting. Oh, we bless your holy name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. 
Tonight, like never before, glorify your name. All over the world where they are tuning into this program, Father, do something special. Do something wonderful. Oh, my Father and my God, tonight, wipe away all tears. Meet all needs. Silence all mockers. Glorify your holy name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. And I want you to prophesy to one or two people and just tell him of how God will surprise you today. And then you may please be seated, except those born in the month of February. If you are born in the month of February, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Almost every one of you. That's probably why you beat the traffic. <laughs> My Father and my God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your children born in the second month of the year. My Father and my God, I pray that for each and every one of these, your children, all their blessings will be doubled. Double their promotions. Double their testimonies double their anointing, double their victories, double their prosperity, and Lord God Almighty, the ability to serve you, double it to them, and let their new year be extremely successful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, somebody shout another hallelujah. Uh, by the special grace of God, the special Holy Ghost service is here again. Next month will be the anniversary of the Holy Ghost service. We started in 1986 and by the grace of God we are still going strong. The theme for next month is the God of breakthroughs. And it will be from March the 2nd to the 5th. March 2 to 5. And then, well, I mean, if you love your friends, you, you will tell them not to miss what is coming because we'll be discussing the God of breakthroughs and that, that automatically means there will be many breakthroughs. And then next week, by the grace of God, we'll be having special divine encounters, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, there will be no divine encounter on Monday morning, since they are going to have one in the evening, and that's 
between six and seven every day. Uh, it will interest you to know that the story we will be considering that the Lord had asked us to look at for the three days is the story of the woman with the issue of blood. I have thought that uh, you can preach more than one sermon from that, but the Almighty God has shown me that even after the three divine encounter days, we will just be scratching the surface. The Almighty God is going to surprise many people through that story next week. Um, and so, because there will be no divine encounter on Monday morning, there will be no Shiloh hour either. But uh, during the divine encounters, special divine encounters, God will take care of Shiloh hour too. Ah, glory be to God. Last month, we, we were looking at the size of God under the heading Wonderful. And you will remember we looked at how long are his legs. He's seated in the heavens. And his legs are so long that they still touch the earth. Very long legs, wonderfully long legs. And then we looked at his arms, just trying to find the size. And we discovered that his arms are everlasting, that from everlasting to Everlasting is God. So, of course, I thought we had finished with the size of God, that now we should move on to the nature of God. So, I informed uh, the one who will be ministering before me that. Today, we'll be talking about the nature of God. And I had made some little preparations for the topic. Well, um, I can almost say I am happy that God spoke to me that that's not what I will be talking about. Because after what that young man did, what is there left for me to say? Uh, <laughs> I think we should give the Lord a big round of applause for the first speaker. I mean, not only did he cover the whole story about God being omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, etc., etc., there were so many big grammar <laughs> that the mathematician was frightened. But the Lord says to me, son, we have all finished with my size. And that uh, in the future, we will talk about my nature. Because my son covered a lot of grounds, but uh, there are one or two things still left about his nature. I mean, when you hear that God is love, you begin to think of a hug. And when you hear that it's also the consuming fire, you say, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> I am not so sure about this hug. Particularly when you hear that whomsoever the Father loves, he chastises. You won't find that whomsoever the father loves, he kisses. 
So we will be talking about the nature of God later on. I don't know when um, it could be <laughs> April or May. Maybe we'll get to that. But tonight, we want to continue from where we stopped concerning the size of God. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. That's what we looked at uh, last month. Incidentally, uh, for those of you who might be wondering again, uh, why is Daddy sitting down again today? I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm healthy. I'm strong. <laughs> but whether you believe it or not, my daddy told me that a wind is going to blow here tonight. Mm -hmm. And somebody will know before we finish that a wind has blown. And it's not going to be a gentle wind at all. It's going to blow away every problem in the life of someone. <laughs> Believe me honestly, and I'm speaking on behalf of my daddy, ah, the Red Sea is going to open for someone tonight. You can take it from me, his son, talking to you on behalf of my father when I say to you, dry bones will live again tonight. <laughs> and it will be a sign to somebody that the wind has blown because someone who had never spoken in tongues before, we speak in tongues tonight. Anyway, I'm just informing you that. But apart from that, let's, let's face facts. It is more comfortable to sit down than to stand. <laughs> so I think this sitting down idea might be a very good one. Uh, particularly for somebody who's going to be 81 next month. Um, when I was younger, there is a language we use when somebody has tremendous influence, we will say he has long legs. Have you heard that one before? <laughs> when someone can reach several places easily, you will say he has long arms. So long leg plus long arms means what? Influence. So tonight we are going to be talking about the influence of the Almighty God. And I'm telling you, <laughs> when it comes to influence, nobody can come near my God. When we talk about area of influence, the influence of a president is limited to his country. If there's an order from Asho Rock that there's a curfew 
Nobody should go out after 7 p.m. And God forbid there be no coffee in Nigeria. That order covers only Nigeria. It cannot extend to Ghana. But even the president, as influential as he is in Nigeria, cannot control whether you fast or you don't. Is that correct? <laughs> he hasn't got the power to say, you must fast or you must not fast. He hasn't got the power to say that the husband should not come near the wife. Years ago, there was a head of state in this country and we were very good friends. Very, very good. We were very close. Uh, and so one day we were alone, you know, just having fun. Everybody has gone. All those who want to see the president, they've gone home. So it's, it's now just uh, a guy and his little friend. And suddenly he has a question. Who is more powerful? The president or the pastor? And I said, ah, the pastor, of course. Uh, he said, I know you'll get it wrong. He said, I can't decree that there'll be a coffee. Then you won't be able to go to church in the evening. I said, that's true. But can you decree that the barren will become fruitful? Can you decree that the lane will walk? He said, I surrender. Tonight I decree. Every one of you considered barren. This year you will carry your children. With the backing of my father in heaven, who is the most influential of all the influencers. I decree to someone here today, you will never weep again. If you receive that, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Now, we are, what is the area of influence? Of my daddy. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 11. Philippians 2, 9 to 11 tells me at the mention of his name, Onishubau, of things in heaven, things on earth, and things underneath the earth. And so I'm, uh, I won't take too much time because uh, tonight I want you to pray and after that we'll be ministering to those who need special prayers. But according to Psalm 139, if you read it from verse 1 to 12, Psalm 139 from verse 1 to 12, you will discover that it's influence everywhere, everywhere top of the mountain, the bottom of the ocean, everywhere. So we're going to look at his influence in the heavens, his influence on earth, his influence underneath the earth. As quickly as I can, and if he asks me to stop anywhere, you can be sure I will stop. Which means we may continue from there. Heaven is his throne. 
His influence in heaven is wonderful. Psalm 115 verse 3, Psalm 115 verse 3 says, But our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. He's the original majesty in heaven. In Psalm 2, if you read it from verse 1 to 5, Psalm 2 from verse 1 to 5, he said, hey, don't worry yourself. Let, uh, let the heathens rage. Let the so-called big people begin to make plans against you. He said, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. <laughs> now that's influence, man. Let all the so-called big ones make their evil plans concerning you. He said, your father in heaven, seated on his throne, we just laugh. And so anybody who is planning something against you is wasting his time. And according to Malachi chapter 3, there are some people who don't like, they don't like Malachi chapter 3. But Malachi chapter 3 is a very important chapter. <laughs> you should read it. Uh, that's where God said, I am the Lord, I change not. Before he now came to, from verse 8 to 11. Because he is influenced, in heaven is absolute. He said, I can just open a window in heaven. Just one window. And pour you a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. He can open the windows in heaven. And if he wants, he can close it. Nobody queries him there. I can never forget this story. You've had it before. Some of you have had it before, but it was very necessary to hear it again today. You remember the man who was a very successful man and uh, had a quarrel with his wife. They didn't know who the wife was. And the wife said, by the time I finish with you, you will trek in Lagos. And the man laughed. How can I trek in Lagos? Because the man had many cars. But the woman set all evil forces against him. And to cut a long story short, by the time he came to Ibute Meta, he had only 50 cobble left in his purse. And he said, if I, if I eat with this money, where will I get money for fuel? If I buy money, if I buy fuel with this money, what will I eat? That's when he came to Jesus Christ. Came to the one who has influence everywhere. The day he was sharing his testimony, he was dedicating two brand new mansions. But he said one thing. He said, I gave my life to Jesus and the heaven opened. I decree today, over every one of you listening to me, the heavens will open. So, so my daddy has influence in heaven. But then that also means he has influence in the heavenlies. You know, there's a place between the earth and heaven that we call the heavenlies. He has influence over angels. If you read Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7, Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 7, you... The Bible will tell you 
that the angels were always singing, praising him, crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And by the way, thank you, choir. You, you did a very great job tonight. Thank you. You might not know it, but for the first time since you have been ministering, you got me standing. The angels were singing, holy, holy, holy. And how many angels I see? Revelation chapter 5 verse 11. Revelation 5 verse 11 calls them 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands times thousands. In other words, <laughs> The writer of the book of Revelation said, I don't have a way of describing the number. We are not talking of billions. We are not talking of trillions. We are just talking of 10,000 times 10,000 plus 1,000 times thousands. And how strong are these angels? The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 20, Psalm 103, verse 20, it said, The angels excel in strength. So if you find somebody who thinks he's strong, he doesn't even know the meaning of strength. How strong is an angel? Isaiah chapter 37, from verse 33 to 37, Isaiah 37, from verse 33 to 37. The Bible tells us one angel killed a hundred and five thousand soldiers in one night. So you can understand that your enemy is in trouble. Because for each and every one of us, there are at least two angels guarding us. And I think I've told you the names of my own two. How many of you remember their names? Ah, very few. One is called goodness. The other is called mercy. For how long are they going to follow me? <laughs> and so that's why God is called the Lord of hosts. Is the commander in chief of all these angels. And so, and, and he can send these angels on errands. They can go anywhere, anytime to take care of businesses. Like in Daniel chapter 6, you can read it from verse 1 to 22. Daniel 6, 1 to 22. When Daniel was shut up in the den of lions, and the king came early in the morning and said, Daniel, servant of the Most High God, your God whom you serve, has he been able to preserve you? He said, O oh, king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the mouth of lions. I have good news for somebody here today. No lion will eat you. can shut the mouth of lions. We'll talk a little more about that later on. But the more interestingly is that they can open doors without keys. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Acts 12, 5 to 11. Uh, Peter was kept in prison and uh, some soldiers were there guarding him. Uh, and then the king wanted to bring him out the following day so he can be executed. And in the night, an angel came in. The doors opened on their own accord. And thank God for Peter. Peter was having a nice sleep because he knew that he is serving a God who can take care of situations. Every one of you, in any form of prison, you are coming out today.
They can open doors, lead you out of prison, physical prison, spiritual prison, financial prison. You are coming out today. And some of you will remember the, 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 the story. I don't want to tell too many stories to but I will do as he leads. I remember the story of that lady who was barren because the mother-in-law didn't like her. As soon as she got married, the mother-in-law went to the market and bought a loaf of bread, charmed it, gave it to the girl and said, eat and use it to block your womb. And the girl ate. And from that moment, she stopped menstruating. And then the Almighty God arranged for us to hold a, a program in Oyo. And she decided to fast in preparation for the program. This day we were to arrive in the afternoon, she was sleeping. And she had a dream. And some people came in dressed like, soul, uh, like uh, doctors. And they put her on her back, operated her, and took a rope and began to draw out the rope. At the end of the rope was something that looked like bread and black, sewed out, and then they disappeared. And she woke up and found that, oh, after all these years, she has started menstruating. I told you that the last time I heard about her, she had five children. Every one of you who have been put in any form of prison, you are coming out tonight. <laughs> when the angels can do a lot more, maybe one of these days who take a, 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 a Holy Ghost service there to just discuss angels. Because in the same Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 18 to 24, Acts 12, 18 to 24, it was an angel that gave a king a slap. The king that wanted to kill Peter. An angel smote him. And when the angel smote him, it was a signal to worms. Worms just came from nowhere and ate the king up. The king was sitting on his throne, an angel slapped him. Before he hit the ground, the worms had finished him. I want you to know that this is in the New Testament. So don't say I'm old fashioned. Because what I'm about to say is related to something that happened in the New Testament. And you know what it is? Anyone trying to block your way to your destiny, an angel will slap him. <laughs> now, so one of the things in the heavenlies are angels. But then in the heavenlies, we also have what we call the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he controls them because his influence is there. In Psalm 121, from verse 7 to 8, 121, Psalm 121, from verse 1 to 8, he tells us that he can decide to tell the sun not to smite you by day, the moon not to smite you by night. What's the, what's the implication of that? It means the sun can smite. Even the moon can smite. You probably have heard of something they call sunstroke. When some people expose themselves to sun um, in a particular fashion, uh, they can get a big problem called sunstroke. It means the sun smote them. Now, but that's not even the important thing. The important thing is because his influence is in the heavenlies. He can tell the sun, don't sweat. 
moon don't rise. Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14. Joshua 10, 12 to 14. Joshua said, ah, Daddy, uh, oh, I'm sorry, no, he won't say that he wasn't born again. Uh, Almighty God, I'm doing your job. I don't want the sun to set yet. And immediately, the sun stood still, the moon stood still, until Joshua finished his assignment. Do you know I have a confidence in me to tell you it doesn't matter what may be happening until you finish the assignment God has for you, you are not going to die. I was approaching the age of 60. My children were preparing for a big celebration. And I was walking around on this campground. Very sad. Sad because at that time, the church was only in about 55 or so, 55 or 56 nations. And I was crying to God, Father, what am I going to do? I'm going to be 60. And uh, I've I've not even started my assignment. You want this church to go throughout the world. What am I going to do? And he spoke to me and said, Son, I'm the one who decides when the sun will set. Thank God the sun hasn't set for 21 years. I decree tonight, in the name that's above every other name, your sun will not set. His influence over the sun, over the moon, which we, of course, we used to calculate time and time to calculate age, is such that he can even ask the sun to go backward. Second King chapter 20, from verse 1 to 11. Second King chapter 20, from verse 1 to 11. The king was sick. And God sent a messenger to him. Go and tell him, put your house in order. You're going to die. Ah, He said, God, I don't want to go yet. No, I don't want to go yet. God said, all right. Prophet, go back and tell him. I give him 15 years extra. Ah, he said, that's great. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, but how am I going to be sure this is going to happen? Because, you know, once God has spoken, and the man of God said, what sign do you want? Do you want the, sun, the shadow to go down? Do you want the sun to move fast forward? Or to go back? Ah, he said, the sun going forward, that's no big deal. Tell the sun to go back. <laughs> and the sun reversed. Or like my children in America will say, the sun backed up. <laughs> because I remember telling them this, this a story about something that reversed. And they corrected my American English. But you have had testimonies of people who lost years. Someone who had reached a certain age and God spoke from one of the altars, whether the one here, the one in Britain, the one at the University of Ibadan, and several other places. And God said, There's someone here. I've taken 10 years off your age. So that someone who was already several years past childbearing suddenly became fruitful again. You won't die before your time. <laughs> but God also has the power to tell the son to move speedily forward. Can say, move quickly, quickly. So that what is supposed to 
be your portion in the future can be transferred to you so you can begin to enjoy it straight away. I'll give you an illustration. In Matthew chapter 15, from verse 21 to 28, Matthew 15, 21 to 28, there was this woman whose daughter was vexed of the devil. She came to Jesus Christ, please help me, have mercy. And Jesus said, I can't give the bread of children to dogs. I know I'm a dog, but please just give me a little crumb. You see, what happened was that Jesus was saying, hey, woman, the time for Gentiles is yet to come. Right now, we are dealing with Jews. And the woman said, mm, I know I'm not a Jew. And I can have a little foretaste. The time for Gentiles didn't come until Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, when Peter had to go to the house of Colidians. At that time, even Peter had to struggle with God. I'm not supposed to go to anyone who is unclean. And God said, eh, the time of somebody being unclean, that one is gone. But God stretched to the future with his everlasting arms and grabbed a miracle in the future and brought it to the present for that wo woman. I prophesy to someone tonight, that position you are supposed to reach years from now, before the end of this year, my God will take you there. Of course, you know that stars can guide. Uh, Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Matthew 2, 1 to 10. When some wise men came from the east, they wanted to see Jesus. They saw a star. And the star led them to where Jesus Christ was. When, as soon as he got there, he stood there. The Almighty God controls the heavenlies. And then let's now look at his influence on earth. Because we can go on and on, but because of time. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone. He said the fellow will understand. And he simply said, this one will not miscarry. Let's look, about, let's look at his influence on earth. Let's look at something as simple as rain. You know, rain is so important. According to Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10, Isaiah 55 verse 10, unless the rain falls, there will be no food for the eater. If rain stops falling, we will soon be all dead because there will be no food to eat. But in Amos chapter 4, from verse 7 to 8, Amos 4, 7 to 8, the Bible tells us that the Almighty God can decide to rain on one city and leave the other city completely dry. So that from the cities where it didn't rain, they will have to go to the city where it rained for food. So rain is a blessing. Ezekiel 34 verse 26. Ezekiel 34 verse 26 tells us that there shall be showers of blessings. But do you know that too much rain too soon can create a problem? I was talking to my children in Bayesa some days ago. 
when I went to see the area devastated by flood last year. Too much rain, too soon, can become a problem. And so Joel chapter 2, verse 23, Joel 2, verse 23, it says, He gives us the rain moderately. I pray for somebody here today, it will rain on you. It won't be too much rain. It will be the rain you can handle. Part of the things in the earthly realm, where it's influential, it has to do with wind and sea. When you read Job chapter 38 from verse 8 to 11, Job 38 from verse 8 to 11, the Bible tells us that it is God who controls the sea. You can see the sea. If you come near, you see the waves. When the waves are coming, you would think, oh, this sea is going to overrun everywhere. No, it gets to a place and then it will just fall back and go down back into the sea. Why? Because God shut it up with doors. Job chapter 38 from verse 8 to 11. God says to the sea, He that told you shall you come and no further. He controls the sea. And in Mark chapter 4 from verse 35 to 41, Mark 4, 35 to 41, the Bible tells us, What manner of man is this? That the wind and the sea obey him. He can command the sea to open when the wind blows on it. He can command the sea to close up when the wind stops blowing. He can use the wind to bring blessings. Numbers chapter 11 from verse 31 to 32. Numbers 11, 31 to 32. The children of Israel needed meat. And he sent the wind to go and bring quills. And they came mightily. What about his influence on animals? You know, lion is supposed to be the king of animals. But it's my father who controls him. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 13, from verse 1 to 25, 1 Kings 13, from verse 1 to 25, he told a lion, a prophet has been disobedient. He said, kill him, but don't eat him. Now, lions normally don't kill except they are hungry. Ask anybody who knows about them. Or they are threatened. When the prophet was sitting down behind the tree and uh, the lion just came, killed him and left him there. As an example. And then in the story in Daniel chapter 6, you know, the lion saw Daniel coming. But the Almighty God told them, don't touch this one because he's the son of the lion of Judah. So throughout the night, you find Daniel was just playing, one lion playing with another lion. But the following day, as soon as they pulled out Daniel, because I'm sure the lion must have grumbled a bit. Lord, you are the one who made us to eat flesh. And this is flesh coming. And you said, don't eat. And God said, don't worry yourself. Tomorrow you will have a feast. The following day, those who threw lion, Daniel into the den of lions came with their wives and their children. And they went down into the den of lions. And God said, hey, lions, this is the feast I promise you. Hey, there is something called the law of substitution. It's in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8. Proverbs 11, verse 8. It says, The righteous is delivered out of trouble, the wicked goes instead. 
I decree tonight, those who put you into the lion's den, we replace you there. He can use a donkey to prophesy. A donkey to speak to a prophet. <laughs> Numbers chapter 22. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord says, one of you had been crying to God, who have been saying, God, pay me special attention during this fast. Pay me special attention during this fast. He said, I will pay you special attention. <laughs> you know the story. Numbers chapter 22 from verse 21 to 35. Numbers 22, 21 to 35. You know the story. I was a prophet that God said shouldn't go somewhere, but he wanted to go. And God uh, decided to talk to him through a donkey. Uh, when you need help, God can use an animal. How do I know? I um, told you this story long ago. Many of you never heard it. I was a small boy, probably between five and six years old. And my elder sister got married and I moved with her husband to another village, not too far away from my own. And one day, I mean, she described the village to me as a small child. And I just felt, I want to go and see my sister. See, the place was not supposed to be far. I didn't tell anybody at home I was going anywhere. My sister didn't know I was coming. My mother didn't know I have left home. And I got into the jungle. And he had said, when you get to this place, turn right, and you get to another place, turn left. <laughs> I turned right, I turned left, I... And suddenly I found myself hopelessly lost in the jungle. I mean hopelessly lost. I don't know the way back home. I didn't know the way to the farm. Uh, young as I was, all I did was I just lifted up my eyes to heaven. And I said, God, help me. Do I hear somebody say, God, help me tonight? And by the time I looked down, I saw a little dog, absolutely white, just white, puppy dog. There was no dog here when I was lifting up my eyes. And the way the dog was behaving, very friendly, it seemed to be making signs to, as if to say, follow me. Well, there was nothing else I could do, so I followed the dog. Believe it or not, the dog led me to my sister's farm. And when they saw me, they all shouted, Ah, how did you get here? I said, I followed that little dog. That They said, dog? I said, yes. They said, there's no dog in this farm. We look outside, there was no dog. If God has to send an animal to help you, so may it be in Jesus' name. His influence over sea extends to the, to the fish living in the rivers, in the oceans. You know the story of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1. Verse 17, Jonah 1, verse 17, when they threw Jonah into the sea, 
God has prepared a big fish to swallow him. And God said to the fish, swallow him, don't digest him. After he repented, in Jonah chapter 2, if you read verse 10, Jonah 2 verse 10, God said to the fish, go and vomit him. Don't vomit him into the sea because he doesn't know how to swim. Take him to dry land. In Matthew chapter 17 from verse 24 to 27, Matthew 17 from verse 24 to 27, when some people wanted to embarrass the Lord Jesus Christ about the issue of tithe, uh, of tax, and you remember what he said to Peter, go to the river, take your hook, the first fish you catch, open his mouth, there will be a gold coin there, it will be enough to pay our taxes. And he went. And God has spoken to a fish. Swallow a coin. Fish don't eat metals. But the fish obeyed. And he spoke to the fish. Be the first one to catch, to, to, to be caught by the hook. And the fish obeyed. In Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 7. Luke 5 verse 1 to 7. You know the story where Peter fished all night and caught nothing. And uh, the Lord said, uh, throw your nets to this side and see what happened. A Bible scholar said, the fish gathered to hear Jesus preach. And so God told Peter, eh, launch a bit into the deep. I have a congregation there. A congregation. <laughs> and he threw the nets. And the fish began to jump into the night. I don't know how God is going to solve your problem. But whatever method he wants to use, it shall be done tonight in Jesus' name. I can talk about birds, its influence over birds. If you read the first King chapter 17 from verse 2 to 6. Ah, thank you, Father. <laughs> now I want to say amen to this one. Because God says there's someone here tonight. He said, as soon as the rainy season begins, your blessings will begin to multiply. In 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 2 to 6, the Bible tells us that God sent ravens to go and feed Elijah twice a day. And like I've always shared with you, everybody knows that ravens love bread. Every bird loves to eat bread. Ravens in particular love meat. But they took bread and meat to Elijah twice a day. They did not eat the food on the way and they did not miss the address. And so I'm decreeing the devil won't eat your miracle. And your miracle will not miss your address. But let, let, let's, let's, let's move forward quickly because of time. What about his influence on men? Because we, we, we make a big chunk of things on earth, men. Well, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Proverbs 19, verse 21 says, Many devices are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord shall stand. As they say, man proposes, but God disposes. God 
controls all men. And I mean, it's in control of all men, including kings. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. Proverbs 21, verse 1. He said, that The heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. He turns it whichever way it pleases him. And he can do whatever he likes with the heart of anybody. He can harden the heart of, like he did in the case of Pharaoh. He can even tamper with the heart a little, like in Daniel chapter 4, when the king had to eat grass for seven years. But he can use a king and a servant to fulfill the dream of somebody he loves. For example, in Genesis chapter 41, from verse 1 to 44, Genesis 41, from verse 1 to 44, you know the story. Joseph had had dreams. And then somewhere along the way, he had met this servant of Pharaoh. He repeated the dream correctly for that fellow, told him, don't forget me here. The fellow got back to a position of promptly forgot uh, Joseph. But when God was ready, Joseph was in prison. And the king had two dreams. By the end of the day, Joseph was already prime minister. I don't know who God will use. It could be the president. It could be a governor. It could be a king. It could be a servant. But one way or the other, I am convinced the purpose of God for your life will be fulfilled. Yeah. Now, I've always told you the story of when I talk about you laughing last. I've always told you the story of a girl who was jilted by her supposed lover on the wedding day, I mean, it was the day my wife and I went to the registry, and there was this lady, beautifully dressed, about to be married. They didn't know, she didn't know the, the boy was just deceiving her. Waited and waited, the boy didn't show up. Somehow she survived. And then she got another man married, another fellow, in the military. And the boyfriend that jilted her also joined the army. And then there was a coup. And the new commander in chief appointed her husband as a military governor. And they appointed the boy who jilted her as the aide de camp of her husband. <laughs> so that anytime the lady wanted to go to the market, she would stand back for the aide camp to open the door. She laughed last. Somebody here will laugh last in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, uh, no more asthma. Thank you, Father. He also asked me to tell somebody, he said, don't listen to the devil. I have not finished with you yet. <laughs> and then you can then go underneath the earth because of time. You know Psalm 24 verse 1, Psalm 24 verse 1, says, so the earth is the Lord's and the fullness 
they are everything under the earth. They all belong to God. Psalm, um, Isaiah 45 verse 3, Isaiah 45 verse 3, God talks about treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places. He was talking about the treasures underneath the earth. I'm sure you know that all the precious stones all come from underneath the earth. And Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, God says, silver is mine, gold is mine, saith the Lord. Someone pointed out to me sometimes that Job was, a oil, was an oil magnet. I said, uh-uh, where do you find that? Eh, he said, Job chapter 29 from verse 1 to 6. Job 29 from verse 1 to 6, where Job spoke about rocks pouring out oil for him. When I heard that one, I said, I better decree to somebody among my children that by the special grace of God, very soon you too will become an oil magnet. <laughs> but in the... In the <laughs> somebody really got it there. <laughs> But the Almighty said something just now. And he said, whatever it's going to take to silence your mockers, I will do it. Yeah. When we talk about underneath the earth, God was also referring to forces of darkness. He controls the hosts in heaven. The host on earth as men, soldiers, etc. The host underneath the earth as host of darkness. All I can say briefly there, because of my time is running, is that even the devil must take permission from God before he can attack anybody. All you need to do is read Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2. When he went to God and said, I want to attack Job. God said, you can't go this far, but you can't go further. And then somebody said, in that case, you are saying God can, get, uh, can give permission to the devil to attack me. No, you are a child of God. You are not an ordinary servant. Job was a servant, and you are a child. Nobody performs experiment with his children. In the name that's above every other name, no evil will befall you. And no, no demon will be able to penetrate through to you. But let me close with this one. Real influence. Your area of real influence is where your word is law. When you speak, it happens. <laughs> I am the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. When I said, my children, this year we are fasting for 50 days, everybody in the redeemed Christian Church of God said, Amen. One or two said, Ah. Only 50 days. We have been waiting for 100 days. Don't worry, 100 days will come. But that does not mean that any other denomination must fast. Because my word is not law among them. The word of God carries weight everywhere all over the universe. Psalm 33, verses 8 and 9. Psalm 33, verses 8 and 9. He says, Let the whole earth fear the Lord. 
Why must we fear him? He said, because he speak and it is done. Psalm 62, verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. He said, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. Power belongs to who? <laughs> Power belongs to God. In Isaiah 55, from verse 10 to 11, Isaiah 55, from verse 10 to 11, he says, My word that I have spoken will not return to me void. In Luke chapter 7, from verse 1 to 10, Luke 7, from verse 1 to 10, you know the story of the centurion whose servant was sick and came to Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ said, I will come and heal, he said, that, No. <laughs> I know who you are. Speak a word only, and my servant will be made well. Ah, do I hear somebody shout, Lord, speak to me? Amen. We could take a case study very quickly, and I won't take time over it. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Mark 10, verse 46 to 52. Oh, thank you, Father. Daddy, I say amen to this. The Lord says, someone here tonight should enlarge his capacity to give thanks. He said, because a flood of blessings is on your way. In Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, you know the story of Bartimaeus. Was begging by the roadside, heard that Jesus was passing by, and then began to cry. The people told him to shut up. He kept on crying. Jesus heard him and said, go and bring him. They brought him. And Jesus asked him, what do you want? And he said, I just want to receive my sight. And Jesus spoke a word. Receive your sight. One word from the one who is Influential all over the universe. And suddenly darkness became light. I decree in the name that's above every other name to every one of you here today, there shall be light. One word was what God said. And suddenly, Poverty came to an end. That man never begged again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree, you won't die poor. One word, and all his enemies became his servant. The people were asking him to shut up were the people that God said, go and bring him. Said, you know, I've told you once, it might not be a good idea for God to wipe out all your enemies. And some of them should remain. You see, because he said, I'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And there are to be some of them to see you enjoy. Maybe you shouldn't kill all of them. You should just paralyze them. <laughs> or turn them to your servants. One word from the Lord. And the man who would have died barren, who would never have married, suddenly became a center of attraction. I wasn't there, but I'm sure after what happened to Bartimaeus, he became very famous. And I'm sure he, he got married and uh, 
I'm sure when we get to heaven, we will know the details. One word from the Almighty God and the man who had been stagnant for years, a beggar. He never got a promotion. If he got any, it is probably chief beggar. And the man was promoted. From the roadside, he became the center of attraction. One word from the Almighty God, and his sickness disappeared. One word from the Almighty God, and he was no longer in bondage. Let somebody shout again, Lord, speak to me tonight. When I was preparing this sermon, I was wondering, how, how can I conclude? Because there are so many other things from this issue of influence of God. And the Almighty God whispered to me a song. It's a Yoruba song. But I will tell you what it means in English. It simply says, you the owner of the earth, please walk by me. Obatunile. Wari ile mekoja. Rinle mekoja. Kaye mekole dara. Rinle mekoja. Kaye mekole sunwa. Obatunile. Rinle mekoja. You, the owner of the earth, walk by me so that my life can change, so that your influence can transform every bit of my situation. Just pass by me. You pass by the man in John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, who have been among those people who are hopelessly sick for 38 years. You walked past him. He got his healing. You walked by the man called the man, man of Gadara in Mark chapter 5 from verse 2 to 20. Mark 5, 2 to 20. Because the Bible tells us that the area where that madman was, nobody can pass by there. But my father walked by him. All the demons left when God spoke a word, go. And the man that was supposed to die a horrible death became an evangelist. You walk by the tent of Abraham and all prophecies became a decree and the man who had been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for almost a hundred years became the father of Isaac. He has influence everywhere. If only he can walk by me today, my life will never be the same again. How many of you want to say, Father, walk by me today? Which is good news for those of you who have not given your life to Jesus. He's here already. And he's giving you an invitation. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady. I give you rest. Come and taste my influence. I will make everything new for you. 
But it's up to you to accept his invitation. It's up to you to reject his invitation. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice and you open the door to me, I will come in with all my influence. But if he knocks and you don't respond, he will move on. So those of you who are here, and you would love to surrender your life to Jesus, this one who can influence every facet of your life, this one who can touch those who can help you so that they will help you. This one who can tell your enemies, leave him alone, and they have to obey. If you will accept his invitation, he will receive you, and you will become one of his children. And from now on, all things will become new. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count from one to ten. Before I say 10, please come and stand before me, before the altar here, and we will pray for your salvation, and God will turn the tide for you. And I'm counting now, one. And some of you are far off, so you have to hurry up. Two. Yeah, today is your day, your day of salvation. Three, don't wait for your friends. It's between you and God alone. He's calling you now. He has a reason for bringing you here today. Come. Come. Four. Five. And those of you in the old auditorium, just go and stand before the altar. The men of God are there. They will attend to you too. But you have to hurry also. Because I can see that you are quite, quite a few there too. Six. Seven. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Eight. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. God will strengthen your hands. Hurry up, hurry up, those of you who are coming. Hurry up. I can see some of you see far away. Hurry up. Nine. Okay, thank you very much. Those of you on the way keep coming. But those of you in front now, Begin to pray to God. Call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to please save your soul. Tell him you accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Tell him that you want him to come and live in your heart. Tell him that you will serve him from now on. Ask him to be merciful and save your soul. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands to these, our new brothers and sisters, and intercede for them, that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. 
that they will forgive all their sins. Please pray for them. Pray for them. Pray, pray for them. Ask the Almighty God to please have mercy on them. Save their souls. Pray for them. If there's anyone still coming, you must hurry now because I want to pray for salvation. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Uh, Father and my God, I want to bless your holy name for your word. And I want to thank you for these people that have come to surrender their lives to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls, O oh Lord. Write their names in the book of life and receive them into the family of God. And I pray that from now, anytime they call on you, you will answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Now, those of you who have come forward, um, I want to promise you that by the special grace of God from now on, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will attend to you now very briefly, and uh, we'll wait some minutes for you before we continue. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord. Now you want to write down your prayer points. Point number one, of course, you want to praise God that you are able to make it here tonight. That's a special grace of God. Somehow, you were able to get enough fuel to make it. Don't worry, in the mighty name of Jesus, fuel scarcity will soon be a thing of the past. That's a decree. I thought you would say amen to that. <laughs> Point number two, you say, Father, please open the heavens wide over me. Father, please open the heavens wide over me. Number three, accelerate my progress. Father, please accelerate my progress. Number four, Father, please grant me favor. before you and before the high and mighty grant me favor number five father render my antagonists Powerless. Render my antagonist powerless. Number six. Father, let my harvest be bountiful. You are the controller of the soil, controller of the rain. As I've been sowing, let my harvest be bountiful. Number seven. Let your influence be mightily felt. Let your influence be mightily felt in every area of my life. Number eight. Please answer all my prayers during this fasting period. Be answered by fire. Let all my prayers during this period be answered by fire. Number nine. Father, please have mercy on my nation. Have mercy on my nation. Number 10, uh, 
as you pray for me, ask the Almighty God to have mercy on the general Vasya and establish all these decrees and then any other private prayer of your own you can add to that. Now since we will still be laying hands on those who are sick, uh, I'm going to give you only 30 minutes to pray. The altar is open. We want to come to the altar. You are free to do so. Only 30 minutes. God will answer all your prayers.
Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The controller of heaven and earth, we grant your request. He will open the heavens wide over you. His angels will take care of you. He will accelerate your promotion. You will not die before your time. You will find favor with him. Amen. You will find favor with men. Amen. Whatever method he has to use to solve your problems, he will use them tonight. Amen. You will have a testimony. He will have mercy on you. He will have mercy on your family. He will have mercy on your nations. He will answer your prayer by fire. You will remember tonight for good. You will reach your goal. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. And let's return to our seats very quickly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now the battle is over. Now the battle is over. Now the battle is over. I am more than a con. Amen.
Amen. Now, what of God says, if two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask on earth, it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. So in case there are people who are sick, who see, feel that they need a touch of agreement, we would love to lay hands on such people now. So the pastors will please take their position. And those of you who feel you need lay on of hands, who will come to them. They will lay hands on you just to confirm the prayer you have already prayed. And then we will thank God and we'll be on our way. Okay, so pastors, please, let's be quick. Um, let's give the Lord a big round of applause for our pastors. Just come, they lay hands on you, and not going to spend a whole night on one person. They just lay hands on you in agreement to confirm the, the prayer you've already prayed. Okay, over to you, Ben. The great prayer, Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty God, the great prayer. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty God, mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the King of Kings, the great Fire. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the mighty God. Mighty God. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are the Lord of hosts. The great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia. Mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. Mighty God, Mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia. Dependable, dependable God. Doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional, intentional, intentional God. Everything is working out for my good. Dependable God, dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional, God. Everything is working up for my good. You are good. You are good. Jesus, you are good. You are good. You 
are so good to me in all circumstances. In all circumstances, oh, Jesus, you are so good to me. In all circumstances, thank you, Lord. In all circumstances. So good to me in all circumstances, in all circumstances. Oh, My father is the highest in his higher than the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. He's the highest. He's higher than the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. He's higher than the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the highest. highest. My father is the highest. He's higher than the highest. My father is the highest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father is the greatest. He's greater than the greatest. My father is the greatest. My father. My father is the richest. He's richer than the richest. My father is the richest. My father is the Yeah, I gave it. You're not in my universe. 
you, Father. Well, all that remains for us to do is to say thank you to the Almighty God for all he has done for us tonight. And then we have the final blessings and we'll be on our way. So let's take our thanksgiving offering and uh, the band will keep on ministering and then we'll go to the nearest basket, drop our thanksgiving offering and you can celebrate with as many people as possible, shake hands with them, rejoice with them because uh, the wind has blown. The sea is parted, and when God opens, no man can shut. Glory be to God. So, over to you, Ben. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful for So, Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you for visiting us again tonight. Oh, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. My Father, my God, 
for the souls that have been saved, for the sick that you have healed, for the captives you have set free, for speaking to our tomorrow, for our knowing that our tomorrow will be all right, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please receive the offerings of your children. Bless it. Use it for your glory. And as far as these your children are concerned, I pray that they will never lack again. As you go home, in the name that's above every other name, God will go with you. He will clear the way for you. This month, nothing evil at all will come near your home. You will never write a letter of sorrow. You will not receive a letter of sorrow. Your joy will continue to multiply. God will answer your prayers. He will bless you. He will bless your families. He will bless your ministries. And in a very special way, the Almighty God will smile on you. Before we meet again, your testimonies will be great. They will be mighty. And they will be many. And you too, you will serve the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, who got the biggest miracle tonight? Let me hear you shout the biggest hallelujah. <laughs>